All right, let's talk about why I drug this car home from Lincoln, Nebraska last weekend. This car had been on Marketplace for months, and when I decided to go ahead and get it, it said that I had saved it on there five weeks ago. That's how long it had sat there. And it was priced, I don't remember, it was priced really ridiculous. Originally, I didn't see that price, but the first time I saw it, it had a slash through it, and it said $2,700. So I just kept looking and looking and looking at it, because I'm trying to build a convertible that was my parents, that's exact twin to this, other than this car has the nugget gold interior in it, um, where mom and dad's was this metal arc yellow with black stripes, black top, and black interior with a bench seat. Of course, I've got buckets for it now. But I'm always looking for a parts car slash model to be able to put that car back together if I can ever get a body shop to finish it because I don't do body work. So I'm looking at the car and it looks really rough to me. And the pictures, you know, on Marketplace, people just don't take very good pictures. But there was a picture looking inside like this and I could tell by looking at that steering column how the, it's it's a lot fatter than a than a fixed column I could tell by looking at that column it was a tilt column of course I wasn't going to say anything to let them know that they had a 68 XL with bucket seats in the console and a tilt column and then there was another picture that was just kind of like this, but it, it didn't even really show me that much. But I could see that this car had rear seat speakers. And 68 was the first and only year that they had this dual rear seat speakers like this. They started it in 67, and you only got it, I believe, on this right side. You only got a single rear speaker. Then in 68, they started offering dual rear seat speakers. And in all the Fords, no matter what color of the interior that you had, all of the speaker grills were black. It doesn't matter if it was this nugget gold, if it was black interior, you had black speaker grills. If it was red, you had black speaker grills. On the Mercury's, they were color coded. Let me go over here and show you this park lane. Okay, so this is, this is the park lane we talked about in a several videos back but see this car's got the parchment interior so the speaker grills are color keyed to the interior where in the Fords no matter what color interior you had they were black so you can go back and down the list of my videos and see a video on these power windows and power vent windows and stuff working so let's get back over here to the XL okay so back to the XL so I'm seeing photos like this, you know, and I could also tell that it had an AM FM stereo radio, which means it came standard with the door front door speaker grills. Everybody's always looking for these. I couldn't see this photo. I asked for more pictures and he sent them to me over messenger. That one over there is broken out. It can be repaired. But these speaker grills here, like I say, the rear ones are 67, 68, full-size Ford and Mercury only. And 68 was the only year that they were dual. It was single in 67. Well, this speaker grill here particularly is specific to the 68 Ford XL and the Mercury Monterey. The Ford LTDs and the park lanes and stuff of 68 the speaker grill was went this way, I guess, horizontal. I always get horizontal and vertical mixed up, but they were down here in this carpeted portion of the door, and it, and it was the same way that they ran those speakers all the way through the 70s, basically. You could use them out of the 70s all the way up, but this is a one-year only, and it's Galaxy 500, XL, and Mercury Monterey, and, and the lower model Mercury's are the only ones that use that speaker grill. So people's always looking for that. Then I could also see in this photo, this car's still in the trailer, so I gotta climb up. 
when you're looking in here and you see four things down here, that tells you, you know, you've always got your cigarette lighter. You've always got your right vent. But it's usually just those two. So when you see this, that automatically tells you it's got rear seat speaker. When you see this, it's like, wow, this car also has cruise control. See, it says speed control. There's speed on the top and control on the bottom. And then the only thing left would be right here if you had vacuum door locks, which this car doesn't have. I've got a car over there in the other garage that does have vacuum door locks. So let me run over there and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is the 68 LTD that's actually sold to my buddy Sonny down in North Carolina. He's going to send somebody after it. I just got to get it cleaned up and I want to do a video on it. But see here, you've got your right air and your wiper or your lighter. And see over here, you'd have rear seat speaker, which this doesn't have. And speed control. But see, this one's got vacuum door locks. Just goes to show that everything back then was a standalone option. And I've got another car over here uncovered. Well, we can look at this one. See the difference in the steering column, how much smaller this is, even though it's got a, a column shift. You could tell that just the column itself is so much smaller. It's not near as fat as a tilt column. That's how I could tell by looking that, that was a tilt column. So let's get back over to the other car. Okay, so back to the Nebraska car. So you see the difference there? That's where if you had vacuum door lock option in this one, there would be one more option going across down here. And so then I had them add, and I also noticed, of course, it has factory air and disc brakes. So, and I specifically asked them also if it was a 390 two barrel or four barrel. And they told me that it was a two barrel, so I just thought, okay, well, no problem. And supposedly the engine was rebuilt by Blueprint Engines up there in Nebraska somewhere. They're supposed to be really well known. <clears throat> the old guy was wanting to restore this car and he died and it never happened. But you could tell by looking at the engine, which we'll get to, that I do believe, I have no reason to believe it wasn't rebuilt. I haven't tried to start it yet, but we'll do that on a video. So. I'm looking at this stuff, and this piece, this metal piece here, was missing out of the shifter handle. I could tell when it was photographed this way, but I thought, well, I've got some more. But then just so happened, when I got home, it was in this compartment here. So it's still missing this center piece here. It's got this one, but I grabbed these and threw in here just because you know I am the only one that makes these so I can paint that and have a nugget gold spacer to go right back in there and the screws are missing on this side they are in this side but they're missing in this side and something you ought to know I believe it's Home Depot this number up here 525852 comes in a four pack of these screws and they are identical to these factory Ford screws for the shifter handles. So you can still buy these. All right there it is, ever built. You buy four, that's all you need for the shifter handle. So let's go over to the other side. Okay, so I had him to send me some more pictures so i'm seeing it like this and i could tell that it didn't look like that that speaker grill over there was cracked so i thought okay there's some money there's money in the rear speaker grills you can see the convertible top boot that's draped over the seat here let's see if we can get back here so it's still snapped down across the back seat and on the rear armrest here and I don't believe that this convertible top boot 
has got a rip in it so there's a really nice nugget gold convertible top boot if somebody's looking for one everything looks original and untouched back here in the convertible top well which is another good reason to have it so when mine goes back together I can see all the nuts bolts screws clips everything that I need same with the windshield the the a pillars and the bracketry with the top latches for the sun visor and all that all that's original untouched so this is like gold to have it when you're trying to restore a car that's been apart also when I had him send me more pictures that verified that in fact it does have tilt wheel now the cruise control turn signal lever is broken off that was clear to see but it all looked to be original under the hood like it was all still there the convertible top switch is still intact i just had a guy ask me if it had this e-brake warning light option and i told him i didn't think it did but it does but anyway i wasn't too worried about this because i've got a really nice used one and I've got two new old stock ones. So, not that I'm gonna fix this car up, but, you know, if someone wants to add cruise control for a car, I have all the pieces. So, I'm looking at all this stuff thinking, well, 2,700 bucks, I just, I didn't really see how I could go wrong. Um, you pay $2,700 for the car, well, good Lord, 20 years ago, I was selling bucket seats and consoles with fixed columns for $1,500. People are, well, 1000 bucks anyway, and with shipping, you know, and all that. You're pushing 1500 bucks, And these seats are really nice, except for this one. You can tell somebody's redone this bottom portion and used the wrong material. But you can get really good quality seat material for these cars. So... I wouldn't even consider selling a tilt steering column nowadays for less than $850 because I've never sold one for less than $650. I mean, it's just something you don't see. So let's just say you sold these bucket seats and console with a tilt steering column for $1,850. You know, that takes the price of $2,700 down to $850 you got in the car now. Um, I would probably sell one of my aftermarket shifters, but let's just say somebody wanted that shifter assembly. I've sold at least three, if not four of those. In fact, I've got a guy making payments on one right now, and I grabbed this too to show you. This here, the squeeze handle, the two side metal pieces, the four screws, the inserts, the handle with the spring. I've sold at least three if not four complete setups like this for $500 a piece. So, say so you just sell the shifter and you sell, and you, I sell another shifter that I got and I keep this. See, so I was doing this math. You, you got it down then to $350 is all you got in the car. And then you've got Everybody's always asking for these hash marks. Ford called them the front, uh, an ornament, front fender. Well, this one's got a pretty good mark on it, but you got one, two, three good ones here. And then as I was digging through the car, there's I want the hood ornament. I found this dealer tag O'Shea T. Rogers, Lincoln. So I'm assuming that's Lincoln, Nebraska. The hood ornament is in here, but the pins are missing off of it. But this doesn't hardly have any pits in the metal. So if you repaint that red in the plastic, and you, you could actually stick this on your car, put a couple, two or three layers of that 3M trim tape 
on the back of this and this is actually quite usable for somebody that doesn't have one so here's a hash mark with the broken pin there's another one with the broken pin there's two good ones and one with a half broken pin so there's five there's five good ones I wouldn't sell those for less than $75 a piece. So you're looking at getting now down into money that's actually about got the car paid for already. Yeah, if you sell five of those at $75 a piece, that already puts you $25 ahead minus your fuel. So that's why I just couldn't see not going to get in the car. Not that I'm ready to sell anything right now. And these rocker moldings, I looked at them, they're no good because somebody's already drilled holes through them. And I've got, I've got some good rocker moldings. <clears throat> Another thing cool about this car is I noticed the guy opened the trunk and threw some stuff in there and then just handed me the keys and I put them in here and didn't pay any attention to it. Well, then when I went to check out the glove box and the trunk and stuff, I didn't see a trunk key. So I realized... This car's got the single key locking system option on it as well. See there? One single key does the ignition, the doors, the trunk, and the glove box, but then I realized whatever Nimrod Put this color fender and door on here didn't change the lock cylinder so that one's got one in it it don't work otherwise you would have another option right there a single key locking system but that went out the window i may see if a locksmith can do something maybe rekey that or put different tumblers i'm not sure if you can or not so I get home, you know, remember that day I was just getting it in here to get out of the weather. We had four inches of rain this week. So I finally got to look at this. And looking at the VIN tag, I noticed right off the bat, it's a Z code, which means it's actually a 394 barrel. And I looked, and it definitely is. It looks like it's got a new Holley on it. So if you look at this breakdown, I can't get this door to stay open good. Let's see. <clears throat> no. Anyway, 76B is convertible. It's a, uh, XL convertible. W is metal arc yellow. The RY is nugget gold vinyl bucket seats. 04D is the date code. That is... I believe April 4th, 1968. I got the book here, opened it up. D, April. So April 4th, 1968, the car was scheduled for build. DSO, 54. So, let's see. Where's the... Ordering district codes. Probably right in front of my face. District codes. Mercury and Ford. 54 is Omaha. So, that makes sense. I bought the car west of Lincoln, and the dealer tag says Lincoln on it. So, the car must have lived in Nebraska its whole life. Um... Where was it built? I don't know. Let me see. Number two code is the assembly plant code. <clears throat> so that is W as well. So 
assembly plant codes W it was built in Wayne. I believe that's Wayne, Michigan. Is where the car was built. <clears throat> Axle code is one. 2.75 to 1. It's conventional. If it was locking, it would have a letter. And transmission is a U. Automatic XLP, XPL, which is what everyone calls the C6. So that's breaking down the door tag. So it tells me immediately that it's got a 390, it came with a 394 barrel. So I'm thinking, shit, somebody put a two barrel in it or what and they they're telling me that's definitely the original engine but you know I told you I've already showed you what this stuff brings so I wasn't worried about losing any money but then I'm looking at this everybody's always looking for one of these air-conditioned fan shrouds this one's perfect not broken at all and this engine you can tell has been painted it's got new flashing here around the exhaust manifolds. There's no reason whatsoever to me believe that for me to believe that they're lying that this engine wasn't rebuilt. We'll see how it runs when I go to start it. The transmission was supposedly rebuilt too by a reputable company. So here's the cruise control servo. Still has the relay on it. It still has both cables, the one going down to the transmission and the one going to the speedometer head. All the vacuum lines are intact. So I can see this, too, just from a one single engine picture in the uh, marketplace listing. That It looked like, to me, everything was put back the way it was supposed to be. Nothing looked missing. So, again, just another reason to thank it was worth the trip after it the hideaway headlights i don't know yet we haven't put a battery in it it's got what appears to be a, ba a tractor battery in it but it's definitely not up there's no dome light or anything this hose here they've got going down to the fuel pump so they said they went to pick it up I don't remember the forklift or something and they gouged the gas tank and it is smashed and it is seeping gas out. So I believe them and they did throw in another gas tank with it. So like I said, I'm not trying to fix this car up anyway. So I'll just get me a gas can, put this hose in it and dump some gas in the carburetor and fire it up and see if it runs. I think you can see through there. It looks like a pretty new Holly sitting on there. So you know, the air's all here. The master cylinder probably isn't that old. I don't mean the brakes work. They said it did stop, though, as far as, you know, pushing it around. It did have brakes to get it stopped, but I don't know about how they work when it's running. Now, you've got a complete hideaway headlight assembly. And these grills look perfect. There's no cracks in them. There's no pitting. You just need to repaint this, the argent paint on the outer edge and clean these things up, repaint the black back in here behind this, and you got a beautiful grill that would work in any show car. So I wouldn't sell a complete working hideaway assembly setup for less than $1,000. There's no way that I would consider it. So there's more money. People's always looking for bumpers. Both these bumpers are trashed. They've been pulled around on. This one's pulled out. Big dent here. The body is absolutely no good at all. Somebody stuck this stupid J.C. Whitney stick-on body side molding on it. The mirror's just hanging off. You can see I brought it all the way home that way. Doors are rusted in the bottom. See here, doors are no good. Quarters are no good. It looks like they, well, there are some patch panels in the back. It looks like they were getting ready to do some cutting. And you can see there, they're gone. Somebody spoke up on one of those Facebook groups and said, they're getting so rare, fix it up. That guy has no clue what it's like trying to find 68 XL parts. 
I probably got more 68 XL parts than my freaking house is worth what I paid for all this stuff that I have. See, this bumper is rusted all the way through and it's all pulled out at the bottom, all beat up. They got the quarter extensions. This one's just hanging. That one's completely gone. And I have not looked at the frame. Coming from Nebraska, I'd be surprised if this frame is any good. But it may be. Everybody said that about my parents, too. Being in Illinois, and that thing ain't got a rust hole in it. I had it acid dipped in Evansville, Indiana. And there's not a speck of rust in it. I don't see any holes in this frame. So when the time comes to part it out and get it off there, who knows, this frame may just be fine. Torque boxes don't even look like they got holes in them. It does have a brand new exhaust under it. They pointed that out. So I'm kind of anxious to see what it sounds like. I'm gonna grab that key before I head over here. That's one thing you can always tell about a Ford, no matter what kind of shape it's in, you can always count on a solid door shut. All right, so you, if we first look at this eyebrow molding, you think, boy, that looks pretty good, but you start looking close, it's got a big gouge out of it right up here at the top, so that's no good. Those things bring really good money too, if they're in good shape. This one's totally gone. This one has the holes for the ornaments, but they're gone. I want you to see this quarter. For the guys speaking up on Facebook and elsewhere saying fix it up. Look, this quarter panel, I would say the whole side of this car was taken out, and that's why it's got a different color door and fender on it. Because look at this Bondo. They just tried to fill it in. You could tell it was sideswiped. The whole quarter smashed and just plumb filled with Bondo. You can see where they, it's got screws in it. And then bondled, bondled over the metal. There's more right there. You can tell this whole thing was just completely smashed in and pulled out the best they could and then filled full of Bondo. See, I'm about to trip over bumpers here. I have a bunch of good bumpers. <clears throat> Again, oh, this here, this, I thought when I first checked this, I thought that the pins were broke, but this is a beautiful, uh, bezel for the trunk emblem this would make somebody a really nice trunk emblem i've seen absolute junk sell on ebay for 250 dollars so it's hard telling what just this bezel would bring especially with a cleaned up insert i had those inserts reproduced at one time it was very costly and i almost lost everything i had because the people that said they were going to take them wound up not taking them and I sat on them for a long time, but they're finally all gone. Now see here, again, the ignition key going in the trunk. Single key locking. So, this car was ordered with bucket seats. Which, as most people know by now, the XLs came standard with bucket seats up until December of 68. No. Yeah, no. December of 67. Ford announced they were dropping the bucket seats as standard in the XL and they started making you pay for them. So this car's got the optional bucket seats, tilt steering column, air conditioning, disc brakes, AM FM stereo radio with rear seat speakers, single key locking and cruise control and a 394 barrel. So somebody check some option boxes. Now, I haven't really gone through much of this. 
to me that looks like a GM actually it says GM on it so that'll go in the scrap pile air cleaner cover here are the quarter panel emblems which I haven't looked at yet they got some pretty good pits but the plastic somebody would probably want Yeah, I don't know. That'd bring a little bit of money. They told me they had some new old stock trim for it, and then when I got up there, they said that the guy never gave it to them. This tail light bezel looks like it will clean up really good. I don't know what all's in here. Let me set this down so I can pick this box up. Okay, I got that box picked up, got this out of it. I think this bezel, this door, door, uh, taillight door bezel looks to me like it doesn't have any pits in it. If it's got all the tabs on it, that will probably clean up and bring some decent money. Here's a manual door mirror. Front fender molding. Two left-hand turn signal lenses. Somebody's always asking for those, too, and those look like they will clean up really nice. They were originally foggy like that. That's the way they made them. They're not cracked up bad at all. Another headlight door. Here's a right one. It does have a little bit of a crack in it, but it's not broke. That's the right-hand eyebrow that's beat up. That's not worth anything. There's another headlight door. This thing's junk. Hmm. There's the piece to the cruise control turn signal lever. What's left of it. Here's one single black door panel. That must have came from the car they got the fender and the door from. And look at that. It's got another stereo speaker grill in it. It's got one and a little piece. These this this is very repairable. This here would bring good money because that's very repairable. As long as you can keep your wife or whoever from kicking a hole or kicking it back out once you fix it. There's some patch panels. Here's a dash pad, which they told me was in here. And I think this thing will clean up extremely well. And it's got a crack right there. But I'll tell you what. A guy could hold that down and fill that in lightly. And let that set up and re-dye this and probably have an extremely nice dash pad. And I paid $1,000 for the new old stock one I've got. So if that gives you any idea of what I'll want for this, if it cleans up that nice. Let's set it over here on the floor. Yeah, I've got a feeling that that dash pad is probably one of the most usable dash pads that I've ever seen. I may try to get it fixed by a repair guy myself. And re-dye it or see if someone else wants to do it. But that's a that's a really good money piece right there. Alright, what this these this is the lower left quarter patch panel. Actually looks like they did a pretty dang good job putting that original body line in there. So this is a half for the left rear. And then this must be the front. Yeah, this is the front one here for the left quarter. And then that's the right rear piece. And this one here must be the right front of the rear quarter down here. So yeah, there's some patch panels. 
I don't know who made them or if anybody still makes them, but if anybody's looking, those I would sell. Because they actually look like they're pretty good quality. There's a lower quarter trim that's not beat up. That would clean up really nice. They've drilled holes in these, so they're no good. There's the lower dash. That's not worth anything. That's about it in the trunk. I don't believe this piece is 68 Ford. So... This trunk, you know, most of these trunks are usually completely ate out with rust, like nothing left, giant holes. And honestly, I think if you went to the right guy, this trunk lid would be extremely repairable and usable. I don't really, well, I don't know. That might be dented. I'd have to look at another one. I don't know, though. It closes good and meets up really well lined up and this piece of trim here i'll straighten this stuff up and i will clean that up and sell it because those bring good money and another thing cool about this you could tell by having single key locking and you don't have that extra key dangling down usually this is all completely scratched up and really beat up this one's really nice so i'm not the least bit worried about getting my money back out of this thing and actually making some money and still having a good parts car and model to get mine back together if it ever freaking happens. <clears throat> the story with this car, my car, I took it apart years ago, like 1993. My dad gave it to me in 1989. I went to restore it. Then I bought a house, you know, and then I bought a truck and then a car and then a truck and then a car and all these vehicles that just kept getting put back on the back burner. I took it to a local body shop, the ones that did my green car. This one here that you've seen in all my videos, well, some of my videos. This car will be in Detroit this year at Motor Muster, Greenfield Village. But they did this. They do great work. But just, just body shops don't want to work on old stuff anymore because they make too much money on insurance jobs. But anyway, I took it to them. We were going to do it. Sat there for three years. Never touched it. So I went back, got it. I talked to this other guy in to do it, and he actually teaches auto body. I was teaching auto body at one of the local prisons to the inmates. So he took it to his house, and he was going great, doing absolutely great on the car. So I bought all of these parts cars sitting out here that you've seen in my other videos, this 428 LTD, the LTD that I'm selling to my buddy Sonny. I've got that green convertible out there. i got a four-door LTD out there. i got over $10,000 wrapped up in just those four you know, it was five years ago. And now they're just sitting outside deteriorating because, as you can see, I'm out of room. And anyway, the guy's wife left him. And he went off the deep end, which is understandable. And I didn't pressure him. I, you know, I don't want you working on it when you're not in your right mind. So he started doing a lot better. Was seeing another girl. Started working on it again. Was doing great. Mind you, I've given him over $7,000. To do the body work on that car it's still not painted so he got another girlfriend was doing great was working on it again i went out there and drilled some new holes for the lower rockers and stuff because i had new old stock quarters and then everything went wrong with that girl and i don't know now he's got another girlfriend then new year's eve his Ex-wife committed suicide. He's got two boys, so I know he's going through hell. But honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do about getting that car done. No one around here wants to do it. So hopefully he snaps out of it and gets back on it because he does great work when he's in his right mind. I don't have to tell a lot of you guys how these girls can screw your mind up. So you know, I'm trying not to pressure him. But it's been five years and $7,000, and the car still doesn't have any paint on it. But every time I see something like this... I just hate to pass it up for that kind of money. You look at it and you think it's a piece of crap, but you start adding up what this stuff's worth, and it's a no-brainer. So, thanks for listening to me complain. So, I'm going to get off here. 
and call this a video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you understand why I made the trip to Nebraska to get it. And stay tuned because here coming up pretty quick, we're going to see if we can get this thing started and get the tires aired up and see if it'll back down off the trailer. <clears throat> I, I've got a good feeling it's going to run pretty good. I mean, it did have a, a video of the car running in the Facebook ad. So I believe what they're saying about the engine and transmission. So thanks for watching. I hope this wasn't too long and boring. I hope you learned a little bit of something about the 68 Ford and their options. They were really a one-year car only. There's not much else that you can get from anything else to work on them. So if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and that little bell up there so you get notifications and you can see what else we do. Thank you very much for watching.